Hey everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to do some more AMP today. Specifically, we're going to look at some bones. Well, the temporal bones to be specific, so let's jump in. Alright, so the temporal bone, we know where it is. Um, I'll put a big T on it, and I'll outline it for now, but I will erase it. It includes all the parts here that I'm highlighting. There is the temporal bone. Now it's good to spot it, of course, uh, outside of the skull. We'll see that momentarily. So let's uh, go figure by figure here and learn about the specific parts of the temporal bone. So you can describe the temporal bone as being an inferolateral bone in the skull, meaning it's down low, but on the side, inferolateral. Four major regions are often talked about when you mention the temporal bone. So let's sketch those out real quickly. The squamous portion. Now the squamous portion is here, this big flat area, and that's why it's called squamous, because it's big and flat. Remember we had a suture that ran along here separating that temporal bone from the parietal bone, which is here in P, and we call that the squamous suture. Now we know why it's called the squamous suture, because it's on the very border of that squamous region. A petrous region, think of Petr, or the name in English, Peter and lots of other names too that means rock. So Petrus refers to something like rocky, like a rocky mountain. So if you want to find the Petrus portion, go back here and there's the Petrus portion, P-E-T. Now if you say that doesn't look really rocky to me, I totally get it. Um, however, if you can turn the bone around and you can see the inside of it, uh, like maybe you have a calvarium removed image or you have the bone separate, uh, from the skull altogether, you will notice there is a mountain back there that I will show you momentarily. Okay, then tympanic region is like you might think if you know what a tympanum is, and a tympanum is the eardrum, kind of like the tympani in the orchestra is the big, big bass drum, right? So where your eardrum is would be where you find the tympanic region. So that is a big ear hole, and that's the tympanic region. Mastoid region is right here, this lump hanging down, and you can feel this if you palpate yourself right behind your lower ear, you can feel a bony lump, and that is called the mastoid process, and it's part of what's called the mastoid region. So there are the four major regions of the temporal bone, squamous, petrous, tympanic, and mastoid. A temporal fossa is a structure that drives people insane. So let me draw it out here real quick. If I could take this curve here and make it go around like that, and I could color, cover that entire area blue, which I think I will, just for the fun of it. So let's get rid of some of this inkage here. And all right here, all of this, it's not the squamous area, but it does incorporate the squamous region, but it also incorporates the sphenoid bone, part of the frontal bone. A lot of temporal bone there, right? And the parietal bone. This is called the temporal fossa. And you're going to have some big chewing muscles, like a muscle called temporalis, that fits in that spot so you can get some very powerful bite to your chewing motion. Okay, this is the same aspect we saw, but now we've pulled the temporal bone out. So let's, let me peek back. See? It's got this pokey thing sticking out this way. Well, there's that pokey thing sticking out this way. And then I can come back and look. There's the ear hole and this pokey thing hanging down there. And I got the same thing, the ear hole, the tympanic region, and this pokey thing hanging down here. So it's still in the same position we saw, but it does look different once you take it out of position. You can do the same thing again and say, hey, this is the squamous region. This is the petrous region. This is the mastoid region. And this is the tympanic region. But in this one specifically, I want to go through uh, some of the names of the structures that are not regions. So styloid process. Oid, we're going to see that a lot in the bones chapters, uh, refers to shaped like. So this is a, a process, and a process is usually something that sticks out of a bone. It could stick out and reach to nothing else, or it could stick out and connect to another bone. Styloid means shaped like a stylus, and a stylus, of course, is the tool that I'm using to write on my screen with, kind of like a pen or a pencil. So styloid process is a something that sticks out of the bone that looks like, shaped like a stylus. And I'm going to put a halo around it here, 
And there is the styloid process right there. Mastoid process. Again, another bony protrusion that sticks out. This one reaches to nowhere too. Now we know where the mastoid region is. So if we know the mastoid region is back there, we can feel the mastoid process. Again, it's that lump, that bony lump right behind your ear that everyone can palpate. There's the mastoid process. Zygomatic process. Another bony process sticking out. It's going to be reaching for a bone called the zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone. Now the zygomatic bone is not shown here. I can flip backwards one slide and I can put a Z right here on the zygomatic bone. And then again, now you can see this reaching over the zygomatic process of the temporal bone reaching over toward the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone is considered to be a facial bone, which we'll cover in another lecture. Okay, so the zygomatic process, I'll just put here ZP, put a cross in it so it doesn't look like a two. There's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Mandibular fossa. Okay, if you look under the zygomatic process, you'll notice a shady area right in here. That is the mandibular fossa. What sounds like it goes there? Well, the mandible would go there. And I'm not going to try to draw it in very well, but if I drew a mandible, I could kind of draw it like this, right? There's your beautiful teeth. And then the back part of the mandible is going to swing or hinge in that fossa. It'll be held in there by some musculature and other structures, but it's called a mandibular fossa because the mandible, your lower jawbone, will articulate in that place. Now I'm going to get rid of this freaky looking jawbone and take us back to more normalcy. So there's the mandibular fossa, the shady area under the bridge that is the zygomatic process. Okay, the external acoustic meatus, we have seen this in another talk, but it's simply the ear hole. The ear hole that's on the outside, the one I can see from the outside, that's why it's called external. Now sometimes this is called auditory. I'll go ahead and sketch that in there real quick. It still has the same letters E, A, M, if you're trying to just sketch it out rapidly, but it could be external acoustic meatus or external auditory meatus. Now meatus is a tunnel. Anytime you see the word meatus, think about a tunnel. Plural would be meatai. You just replace the us with an i, but you often see the word meatus assesses in American textbooks. So we can go with meatus as, as well. Now I see a word I skipped earlier, fossa. If you went to say a block of Play-Doh and you took your thumb and you pushed it into the Play-Doh, it would leave a basin, right? That's what a fossa is, is a basin and if you look at the structure we named mandibular fossa, you see there that it does make a base. And I'll go ahead and outline it one more time. The calvarium here has been removed. So now we can see deep into the bone, or at least deep into the skull. Now, again, the temporal bone is here. T, T, there's the temporal bone from the inside. Here's the occipital bone. Here's the frontal bone, F and F. Here's the ethmoid bone and this big pink dude is the sphenoid bone. So now we've oriented ourselves even though we haven't gone through those bones all the way yet. Let's look at some structures we can see only when we remove the calvarium. The internal acoustic meatus. Okay we had the external acoustic meatus on the previous slide. It goes all the way through the skull here and the internal one is that hole right there. Notice this is the squamous portion of the temporal bone. It's very flat here, but here's that big rocky mountain. And I'll go ahead and go to black here. I'll kind of draw that big rocky mountain out. There it is, that big petrous portion of the temporal bone. Looks like a big, tall, pointy mountain. There's a cave way up high on the top of that mountain, and that's called the internal acoustic. Again, you could call it auditory. Internal acoustic meatus, a tunnel that extends from the outside to the in. Don't get it confused with this hole, which is called the jugular foramen. That one is in between the temporal bone and the occipital bone. It's good to point it out there so we don't confuse the two. But if you see a big hole, and that's what a foramen is, is the word for hole. Again, it's not quite a tunnel. And why did they call that a meatus and that a foramen? Well, you're asking the wrong person because no one person named this. It's a collection of a lot of terms from hundreds of different years. So in this instance, the jugular foramen 
is in between the temporal bone and the occipital bone. The internal acoustic meatus is all the way part of the temporal bone. I can see my big occipital bone here. I'm drawing an O on. I can see this giant hole here, which we're going to call, well, we're going to call it giant hole for Raymond Magnum at some point when we get there. But I can see, of course, the temporal bone in orange there on the outside of the skull. Some things we know. Here's a lump, even though it's really hard to see. I'm going to draw it in like that. There's the mastoid process. And then right here, this pokey thing. Aha, there's the styloid process. And then this one right here that's reaching out for the zygomatic bone that makes up the cheekbone. We call that the zygomatic process. So I can see some things that we know about, but let's talk about some things we haven't seen yet. Okay, the mastoid foramen. So this makes sense that it would be somewhere near the mastoid process. So if I drew a line down here, I see it right there. Mastoid foramen. Stylo mastoid foramen, again, suggesting it's a whole foramen in between the styloid process and the mastoid process. And if I can look real carefully, that's right here. That's right there. Okay, jugular foramen, remember, if you're going to try to find the jugular foramen, it's got to be in between the occipital and the temporal. So I'm going to circle it here. There's the jugular foramen. I'll just put JF down here. And it's this other hole right above it. And I'm going to do it in a different color. How about green, just for fun? This one here in green, this one does cause problems because you may be thinking that hey, there's an external auditory meatus out here, so that's got to be the internal auditory meatus. But it's only true if you remove the calvarium and you look down. If you look from the bottom up, you see something paired with the jugular foramen, and that's called the carotid canal. The carotid canal. If you know anything about the arteries and veins of the neck, you may have heard of the jugular and carotid pairs before. But it's difficult for somebody who hasn't studied that to get this straight. And then that leaves one more tricky one, the foramen lacerum, which we will see in a couple of different images. The foramen lacerum I'll draw in this color. And it's going to be right here in between the temporal bone and the pink sphenoid bone. And oftentimes when you're studying sphenoid, you will use foramen lacerum as a landmark. All right, so that's that can be a little confusing, as you've probably heard the phrase, I need that like I need another hole in my head. Well, this is this is the result of that. All right, hope you enjoyed that one. Check it out again if you need to get the details down. But thanks for watching it for the first time. And uh, check out some more bony videos if you want to see some more info. See you next time. Bye-bye.